on last week's boiler tip, we looked at drip legs and where we're likely to find them in a boiler room and a few examples in the lab. This week, we're gonna look at some of the specifics of where we want to put drip legs um, because we can kind of go through this checklist and, and make sure we've got them where we need them. Um, first, every 200 foot of steam main run, we want a drip leg. And that's because we're generating condensate in that run and we need to get rid of it at intervals. Um, this is a rule of thumb. You can get away with a little bit longer. Sometimes if you cross outside through a breezeway, you may need to make it shorter because there's more condensate being generated. We need to put a drip leg every time the steam line elevates because condensate doesn't want to go up with the steam. So by putting a drip leg there to capture it, it's a great point to collect and clear that condensate. At every drop, so if we've got control valves, pressure reducing stations, kettles, etc., anywhere we're going to use a steam, use that steam where we take off, we want to have a drip leg. Because presumably if we've got a control valve, at some point it's gonna be closed. And so when it's closed, that upstream piping will flood with condensate. So the drip leg and trap keep that clear. And we wanna have a drip leg at every end of line. So anywhere in your plant that steam goes, at the end of that main, we want to have a drip leg and trap because if we're not using steam in that direction, it's gonna flood with condensate. And that can be introduced to the system um, when we turn a valve on. We could get gallons of condensate before we ever get steam at the end of that line. So that keeps the steam in good condition in the header. 